is one of the last Mercedes AMG products where the numbers on the bootlid still referred to the cubic centimeters of displacement under the bonnet. The 5.5 liter V8 powered SLK55 has been replaced by the SLC43. No longer powered by a naturally aspirated muscle car sledgehammer, the SLC Roadster makes do with a 3 liter twin turbocharged V6 instead. It's lost a little of the former car's potency but gained significant improvements in both fuel economy and CO2 emissions, claiming a more pragmatic advantage over rivals like the Porsche 718 Boxster, BMW Z4 Roadster and Jaguar Ref-type convertible. No V8? Wasn't that sort of the point? While the old car's German rivals offered more of a saver-style approach to driving dynamics, with precise handling and a broad band of communication between the tires and the steering wheel, the SLK55 was a bit of a claymore. Now it seems the shouty hot rod has grown up and is powered by a smaller engine that is kinder to the environment and your wallet. It needs to be good too, with planned installments in the C-Class, GLC and E-Class ranges, you'll be seeing a lot more of that 43 boot nomenclature. Still not the sharpest tool in the drawer while you still won't find the kind of driving dynamics experienced in the 718 Boxster. The SLC 43 does feel extremely sporty and on the right road can provide huge amounts of fun. With a standard fit dual clutch automatic gearbox expect lightning fast shifts when you're going forward and easy cruising when you need it to. There's also a dynamic select system that helps tailor the driver train and suspension setup between sporty and comfortable too. See how the rest of the Mercedes AMG SLC 43's attributes stack up in our full review. There's not a lot of choice here, just one engine. But what the AMG lacks in diversity it certainly makes up for in terms of straight line speed and sound drag. Petrol engine is chewing the old car's 5.5 litre, V8 sledgehammer is a smaller 3 litre V6 motor. It does have two turbochargers though, boosting output to 367 bhp, but that's still about 50 bhp less than before. Still, this translates to a 4.7 second 0 to 62 miles per hour time only a tenth slower than the old car. Plus it sits in a cheap of tax band thanks to lower CO2 output and is more fuel efficient too. In fact at launch Mercedes AMG claimed the SLC was the most efficient six-cylinder roadster on the market. It's a firecracker of an engine with plenty of power at all points in the rev range, and thanks to its two smoothly spooling turbochargers there's no perceptible lag either. Big torque is a muscular 520 newton meters and top speed is limited to 155 miles per hour. The throttle response is sharp and torque builds in a linear way until the red line too. Most importantly of all, the hot rod soundtrack is still there, albeit with a more metallic V6 howl than the old car's V8 burble. There's a full spectrum noise assault from the exhaust, with a crescendo of noise under acceleration and fizzes and crackles between gear shifts. You won't be left wanting for drama with the roof or windows down, but the actual engine sound from the front end of the car is slightly muted by those turbos when you're driving with the top up. Automatic transmission is standard traditional driving purists may lament the lack of manual box but for the rest of us the 9G Tronic Auto, fitted as standard, is pretty fantastic. Under normal running conditions its shifts are smooth and hard to discern but select Sport Plus mode and things become much more thrilling. Do this and the changes feel lightning fast, with an uninterrupted surge of speed on full throttle takeoffs. You can take control of the gearbox using shift paddles behind the steering wheel too, after activating manual mode from a button next to the selector. This speeds up the changes further and also holds you in the selected gear instead of taking over at the limiter like some automatics. We found the gearbox performed very well even when left in fully automatic mode reacting quickly and predictably to braking and holding on to low gears throughout a long corner. The SLC is largely based on the old SLK, which didn't hold a candle in the handling stakes to its main rival, the Porsche 718 Boxster. What it did offer was an engine full of power and character, plus a raucous V8 soundtrack, to make up for those shortcomings. Now there's less power and an arguably less emotive noise, has the SLC 43 lost its edge? In truth it's still not as dynamic an experience as the 718 Boxster, there's no manual gearbox, the steering lacks feel and the traction control is very keen to interfere. That said there's still a lot of fun to be had from SLC thanks to sharp and direct steering, decent levels of grip and good body control. Furthermore the dynamic select allows the driver to modify the engine, transmission, steering and suspension settings between comfort, sport, sport plus, 
Eco and individual modes by using a button on the center console. Chassis upgrades over the old car include newly developed front and rear axles and mounts and more precise steering. The optional handling package adds a mechanical limited slip differential to the rear axle for improved traction and handling particularly on the exit of a corner. If you've spent much time in a Mercedes-Benz you'll recognize the usual mix of expensive looking materials all bolted together with hard wearing precision found in the SLC 43. The new infotainment system, displayed on a larger screen, looks crisp and is easy to navigate. There's not a massive change in design from the SLK so you still get a center stack full of buttons and a straight, simple looking dashboard. There's a noticeably firmer ride than the standard car and bigger wheels too but it's not too extreme. This is a car that needs to be equally good for posing in as it is at tackling a set of switchbacks. Dynamic select means you can turn everything down a bit too and cruising around in comfort mode feels surprisingly unruffled. Wind noise is well controlled with the roof down and you can have a conversation with your passenger even at high speeds. The seats are very snug and do a good job of pinning you down on a spirited drive but don't expect a huge amount of variation in legroom or the angle of the seat back as the cabin is quite cozy. Sitting at the top of the model tree the SLC 43 offers a strong roster of standard kits, including a few performance upgrades amongst a raft of cosmetic changes. Standard Mercedes AMG SLC 43 Roadster equipment helping distinguish the AMG version from the standard SLC is a sporty body kit, 18-inch 10-spoke AMG alloy wheels, red brake calipers, Napa leather and dynamic microfiber seats in black with red contrast stitching and dark carbon grain aluminium trim. You also get an AMG high-performance braking system, AMG speed-sensitive sports steering and AMG sports exhaust system. Display-wise there is a larger 7-inch screen, up from the SLK's 5.8 inches, plus an auxiliary 4.5-inch TFT between the two tube-shaped dials. In the boot an automatic separator divides off the space required for the folding roof, meaning the entire load space can be used when the roof is up. Optional Mercedes-AMG SLC 43 Roadster Accessories The sky is the limit here with rational options like the air scarf neck level heating system and a glass panel in the folding roof with variable tinting, plus more fanciful customizations including various leather upholstery combinations. There's also a handling package with a mechanical rear axle limited slip differential and additional engine radiator, plus a performance steering wheel with red top stitching. Finally take your pick from several 18-inch wheels. The AMG Knight Styling Package, Designo Paint Finishes and a Harman Kardon Surround Sound System. The smallest Mercedes Roadster hasn't been tested by Euron Cap since 2002, when it was given 4 stars, so it's hard to say how the new SLC will perform in a crash. However, Active Brake Assist, which carries out autonomous braking to help avoid collisions, is included as standard. You can also pick an optional LED intelligent light system to enhance nighttime visibility and adaptive high beam assist plus, which adapts the pattern of the lights to avoid dazzling other motorists. With the roof up you have 335 litres of load space, enough for a couple of big bags, but this is reduced when you lower the lid as the metalwork is stored in the top section of the boot. Even so, you could get two squashy weekend bags in there. Storage in the cabin isn't particularly generous but there are a couple of cubbies in the center console and reasonably sized door pockets. The best thing is to keep anything you don't need in the boot.